If you can answer these two questions every time you cook, then your cooking is always going to improve. It's one of the most important steps in your journey toward carefree cooking, and many home cooks don't do it at all. It's the two most important questions in cooking today on the Carefree Cooks Code. I'm Chef Todd Moore, and this is the Carefree Cooks Code, every Tuesday live at noon Eastern. Here's our challenge. How can home cooks cook freely with creativity, confidence, and pride while ignoring recipes and still impressing themselves and others with what they cook? Well, the answer is found in becoming empowered with how cooking works, using dependable and repeatable methods of cooking that work for any ingredient, for any diet, and any desire, just like chefs do. And we'll know we've cracked it when everyone sees cooking as an exciting and rewarding way to improve their relationships, their lifestyles, and their health through better food and cooking. This is the Carefree Cooks Code. Welcome back, everyone. It's so good when we're together. Welcome back to the Carefree Cooks Code. We're live every Tuesday at noon Eastern. And you know what? No matter what your question is, uh, you need to find a recent video. You want to know what the live schedule is. You want to know something about your Web Cooking Classes membership. Well, it's all found in our brand new self-service automated help center. Uh, don't wait for an answer. Get it right away at webcookingclasses.com slash help. Uh, look, we're the Carefree Cooks. We're together every Tuesday and many times in between. Uh, say it with me. I create my own recipes. I bring friends and family together. I learn every time I cook. I create my own cooking style because I practice pro methods and I love my cooking. Uh, so let me ask you a question today. Do you believe that there are certain recipes that work and other recipes that just don't work? Is that a belief or, or has that been a belief in the past? Have you cooked something from a recipe and you're like, oh, well, this recipe doesn't work. <clears throat> I'm sorry, uh, I make fun of your beliefs. But look, if you believe that, if you believe there are just some good recipes and bad recipes, well, how do you know what the good ones are before you start cooking? You always have to find out afterward, right? It's a crapshoot. But if you use dependable and repeatable methods of cooking, then you can review what you've just done. You can ask yourself just two simple questions and I guarantee that your cooking will improve for the next time. The, the only question I ever ask a, a recipe is, huh? Uh, all right, look, before I get going, I've got a what am I for you today. What am I? Here's what it says. It's a little bit more of a riddle, okay, rather than a, a gadget or something. Here's the riddle. Think about this for a minute. Throw away my outer, cook my inner. Eat my outer, throw away my inner. What am I? Tell me in the comments section below. Uh, I'll give you a hint. We're doing a lot of talking about summer foods and summer cooking. If you throw away the outer and cook the inner, then eat the outer and throw away the inner. <laughs> it's a conundrum, but you'll know what it is at the end because I'll give you the answer. Look, the, the reason that we are so different than everybody else, the, the reason that lifetime members of web cooking classes become carefree cooks so quickly, so much more quickly than anybody else, any other way, any other method, it's all because of the way that we learn together. And if you're taking the web cooking classes right now, if you've looked inside the curriculum, you already know how different it is. There, there are no recipes in web cooking classes. Not a one, not a single one. And before home cooks start thinking the way that we do, the way culinary students are taught to think, they can't imagine cooking without a recipe. And you might've thought the same thing a few weeks ago a few months ago, a decade ago, if you've been with us since 2009 when this whole revolution started. Because honestly, you know, the reason that we're so different and, and, and so unique is because of my teaching approach. It, it's something that I've developed over many years with thousands of hours in a professional classroom, more than a thousand instructional videos produced, and 
I've heard they tell me that it's changed the lives of tens of thousands of people all over the world, and this happens on a daily basis. But look, look that's the most you're ever going to hear me brag, okay? Because I don't like doing that. I like being a servant to my students. I, I like being a motivator. I, I, I want to lead with encouragement and empowerment. It, it's, it's this idea that, that there are dependable and repeatable methods of cooking that once you perform them reflexively, right, over and over again, you gain more confidence in your cooking, so much more than a book will ever give you. And this is the case in just about anything else you'll try to do. Think about it. There's always a method. When you take golf lessons, do they just give you a golf book <laughs> and, and tell you to have at it? That's what cooking instruction has been. No, you learn how to hold the club. You learn how to swing the club. You learn which finger goes where. You work on your technique using the golf method. And the more you repeat the method correctly, the further you hit the ball the easier it is to hit the ball, the more it feels good <laughs> to hit the ball sweetly. It builds confidence when you can do something correctly over and over again. No matter what you do, no matter what it is, confidence is the key. Confidence is the most important thing in cooking for sure. Because once you have confidence, then your creativity starts to emerge. But <laughs> creativity before confidence and skill and methods is, is really dangerous and it can be a complete mess. That's, this is what the first semester culinary students are. They're 100% creativity without any dependable methods to back it up at all. And that's why I always focus on the methods so I can set things right again. Because creativity that is empowered with confidence is where all the new creations come from. And it doesn't work any other way. It does not. You cannot be insecure and unsure of your cooking and still be creative, right? You're more likely to be tentative. You're more likely to always second guess yourself at every step of the cooking procedure. You're second guessing yourself. Is that you? Or was that you? Have you, have you seen this change? So look, you can't be creative without confidence and you can't be confident without dependable methods. Think about that for a minute. If you have a dependable method you can do over and over again and it becomes reflexive, easy, do it blindfolded kind of thing, aren't you then confident? But look, here's the best part, right? All those excellent new creations that came from your new cooking confidence is what brings the pride. Pride. That is the ultimate goal for me. That's the place I want to bring everybody to. I want to empower you to be proud of what you cook. No matter what you cook, no matter who you cook for, no matter how many you cook for, by the time that plate comes to the table, you should be brimming over with how proud you are to be giving such love and nutrition to yourself and your family. It's powerful walking to the table with that plate. But look, I also understand that sometimes this isn't so easy, right? It, it's not so easy to get yourself to that confident place. You're not immediately confident. Nobody is immediately confident, creative, and proud, right? It's a powerful combination. It, it takes a little bit of a journey to get there. And the path to becoming a truly carefree cook, <laughs> it's got a lot of twists and turns, right? It, it has a lot of tasks. It has a lot of skills. It, it has a lot of techniques. It has a lot of methods that you have to learn along the way. But you pick them up as you go along. You don't find all of them in one book that solves every problem. If, if you're a curious cook, then this is a lot of fun. This turns you on, right? This is a journey of discovery. And if you're curious, you like that stuff. But if you lack confidence, if you're unsure, if you second guess yourself, it's a really scary trip, right? You just don't know. But if you change your thought a little bit, if you start to think that the destination is the journey, right? It's the journey that's the fun part. 
then you might come to the realization, the true realization, that the journey is never going to end. It's not a book that solves it for you. It's not a magic trick. It doesn't happen once. It's an ongoing journey. And look, if you're okay with that, if you're okay with the idea that you might always be reaching for something new, you might always be striving for discoveries that, that set you free in one way or another, gathering them along your journey, like, like you're putting tools in a toolbox, then you're going to be thrilled at what I'm about to tell you. Because you can look at the entire 48-week curriculum in web cooking classes and choke on the amount of knowledge that's there for you to incorporate into your own cooking. It seems massive at first. I know it. I, I know. Because th there are cooking methods first. Things like basic saute, like roasting and grilling and braising and steaming and poaching and smoking. I mean, do you have to learn all those? Oh, God, that's a confidence killer, no? That seems like a lot. But then there's all those knife skills. There's making sauces. There's eggs, pizza dough, pasta dough, compound butters and fats, rices and grains, herbs and spices, salads, salad dressings, baking cookies, pies, cakes, breads, uh, making soups, potato dishes, icing custards, and it goes on and on and on. So have I scared you now? Have, have I scared cooking out of you <laughs> at this point? I, I mean, I thought I was here to give you confidence, right? Jeez, Chef Todd, you are laying it on thick today. When, when you put it all that way, Chef Todd, you might be saying, I'd rather take my chances on a recipe that may or may not come out every time because that seems like an awful lot to learn. But here's the thing, and I'm getting to the point. I've got a very simple two question shortcut that will help you buzz saw through every single one of these topics that when you put all of them together, this is going to give you a chef level repertoire of methods that brings the confidence, that brings the creativity, that brings the pride. Because no matter which one of those topics that I just mentioned, you're exploring right now, if that's where your journey is right now, from sauteing scallops to, to making a great herb butter, you know, there are still just two questions that you need to ask yourself every time you cook. And if you know what to ask, and if you know what you were trying to accomplish, and if you're honest with yourself with the answer then there's no doubt in my mind that your cooking will improve every time you cook and you'll get confidence every time you cook. And if you do this five to seven days a week, you can knock out each and every one of those skills that I just mentioned because you'll know when you got it down pat. You can move on to something else. Remember, filling the toolbox. Confidence comes quickly when you actually learn something when you see the progression. Compare this approach <laughs> to the faulty recipe cooking. It's like being on a treadmill. You don't ever move forward. I mean, really, recipes make you relearn cooking every single time you use one because they're all different. But methods, oh, my beloved methods, <laughs> they remain the same no matter what you choose to cook. So here it comes. Here are the two questions to ask that are... <laughs> that are really so simple, but so few people do this. Cook something, look at it, and ask, what did I do well? What could I do better? That's simple. No matter what you're cooking, at some point, you should stop and ask yourself these two questions. Think about all the elements of the plate that you just created. Look down at that plate. What are you proud of? Start with proud. What did you do well? Better rice than last time? Not as sticky? Better color on the chicken? Whatever it might be, take a moment. Enjoy that. You have got to look down at the plate and find something that you're proud of because being proud is a strong motivator. Very strong. If you're proud of tonight's dinner, <laughs> I bet you're going to want to cook tomorrow, right? Savor the pride. Bathe in it. Bathe in all you did well. Then you got to stop and be honest. 
what would you do better next time? Right? And you got to take that to heart also, because this is where the learning takes place. Pat yourself on the back as much as you can, but at some point you got to stop and learn because you can always blame a faulty recipe and just move on, right? Remember? Oh, well, that's one of those recipes that don't work, but you can't blame the dependable methods. You can't. They're rock solid. They've been used for hundreds of years. All right. So I'm going to put this to the test. All right. I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about. You want to look at some of my own plates as examples. <laughs> you want to do that? You want to put Chef Todd on the hot seat here? I'm going to show you how I put this into use for myself in my own kitchen. Do I really do this? You might be, do I? Re yes. Oh my goodness. Every night of the week, I've been doing it for decades. This is the mantra of a cook that wants to move forward. Do you think just because I have all the experience I do, just because I got, I got a comma and some extra letters after my name, you think I don't want to improve? You think I don't want to do better every time I cook? Of course, of course I do. And I do things poorly. I mess things up. You've seen many of them live on Facebook, but I also do some things really, really well. And I do things that make me really proud. And then I do other things that make me want to learn. You, you know, there's never a failure. You don't hear me talk about a failure. There's something that makes me want to learn. That's what it is. It's the whole idea. What did I do well? What could I do better? Okay, so you want to play? <laughs> you want to pick apart some of Chef Todd's things? All right, let's look at some of the dinners uh, that I've made lately. This is the, oh, this is the cold uh, Szechuan noodles that I did last Saturday live on Facebook. So uh, go to uh, facebook.com slash chef.todd.more slash videos, and you can find that there. And there's really a lot for me to be proud of in this dish. The colors, right? Really nice colors. The contrast of flavors was really good. You know, it was sweet and spicy. And then there were the tender noodles. I cooked the noodles really well. There were the crunchy peanuts, you know? So I, I got to be proud of the fact that I did really well with the flavors and the appearance. You know, the noodles were cooked perfectly. I'll tell you why, because... I took them out of the poaching liquid early because I knew I was going to saute them and cook them again. A lot of times, you know, I've cooked them fully in the liquid and then when I saute them, they get kind of mushy. So they could have been overcooked, but I was aware of that. So that's a good one. Um, my knife skills, <laughs> my knife skills were really good. Everything looks consistently cut. Everything cooked consistently. That's the things that I feel like I did well. By the way, you know, as an aside, the things that you really feel that you do well are the things that you always do well. Think about this. Once you've got a skill down, you know, once you say, oh, my knife skills, I did well. My knife skills, I did well. My knife skills, I did well. You know, after a few times, you don't have to worry about it anymore. And that's more steps along your journey that you never have to take again. Right? That's the idea. Okay, so let's get to the learning part. What could I have done better? Uh, if you were with me last Saturday, you saw that I forgot to dry the beef, right? After I cut it into cubes or strips, I think it was, um, I should have pressed it between two paper towels and taken the excess moisture out. But because I didn't do this, there was a lot of extra moisture in the pan and the beef kind of just poached in its own in its own fat and moisture, it took way too long to brown. And that might enable me to overcook it because I want it to be brown if I patted it down. So next time I will, an important phrase, next time I will dry the beef and I'll probably get a more crispy or brown appearance. And that, that's a fair criticism of myself, right? That's something I need to do for the next time. Remember that. Uh, next. Oh, uh, remember the uh, chicken tikka more salad <laughs> that, that we did a few weeks ago, right? Feel like I did a great job plating this dish. That's a pretty dish, right? I thought it was a really good idea to mold the rice like that in a ramekin. What I do is I, I heat up a ramekin with hot water and, and then pour the water out so it's still a little slippery, pack it with rice and turn it over, right? Right in the middle of the plate. Good spot for it, right? Um, I've gained a lot of confidence. I was very proud of the way that the dish tasted, right? And ultimately how it looked on a plate. But what I think I could have done better was to thicken that sauce a little bit more. Look at it. It's, a, it's kind of a thin sauce. 
And you know it's a thin sauce because it's covering the entire bottom of the plate. And as I recall, um, I didn't add any heavy cream to the sauce, mostly because I think heavy cream is very fattening. No, actually, I know heavy cream is very fattening, so I try and use it sparingly. But what I was trying to do with this dish was make a lighter, healthier dish with coconut milk and then reduce the coconut milk instead of using the heavy cream. So it didn't really work out for me. So next time I will go back to the heavy cream, maybe, and make a more fattening dish, or maybe I can find a halfway point. Coconut milk and half cream, or, or maybe I'll stick with the coconut milk but use a thickening agent, like a cornstarch slurry, like uh, maybe dredge the, the meat in a, the chicken in a cornstarch slurry. For it. Look, I, I don't know yet, okay? I, I'm not sure yet, but I will remember that the coconut milk alone isn't going to cut it next time. And this is how your cooking improves, right? It's just two simple questions. Think of what you wanted to have happen, compare it to what actually did happen, <laughs> and then go try and figure out what you will do the next time. All right, we got time for one more. You want to do one more? You having fun picking apart my dishes? <laughs> yeah, I thought so. I thought everybody would love to hear me <laughs> criticize myself. But like it, it, this next one, it doesn't happen often, but I'm going to offer this one up. All right, th this one, yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> I know. It's salmon with fried rice and a soy, honey, ginger, garlic, and dill marinade that I thickened to make the sauce. And I know you're already one ahead of me on this one, but let's go through the motions on this. It is obvious what needs to be done <laughs> to this dish. But again, let's not pick it apart first. Let's Let's ask what we did well first. Let's, let's take the pride first. Let's eat dessert first in that regard. Let's take the pride and then we'll talk about this burned piece of salmon. Okay, so <laughs> what I did well is that sauce was amazing. You, you can see the, the nice shine on it, right? It's not running all over the plate like the previous sauce does, right? It, so that means I thickened it nicely. It, it doesn't have uh, little uh, rounds of fat floating on it, right? It's a, a, a smooth, shiny sauce. And the fried rice, the fried rice was a killer, right? It, it was amazing. It was light the way I like it. No MSG, no heavy, salty stuff. Uh, peas, fried egg, red peppers, and green onions. Spot on. All right, that's what I did well. It was a really good compliment to the salmon. And you know, and the other thing about this sauce, do you see it has borders on it, right? It doesn't, it stops at some point, and that's the mark of a good sauce. So huh, what could I do better next time? Okay, so how about not burn the salmon? Uh, that, that might be a good idea, you know, because what I forgot about is that a marinade with a lot of sugar is going to burn in a saute pan. And the honey in this marinade that I made on the outside of the fish, it burned the outside of the fish before it was cooked into the middle. So I had to take it out of the pan. I had to finish it in the oven. And that's something I really didn't want to do. I wanted to saute it and get a nice brown crispy crust on it. And this again seems like I'm repeating the same mistake, but this has to do with drying off the protein before you put it in the pan. I should have dried the salmon. You know, a paper towel, it would leave the flavor of the honey because of the marinade, but there'd be no honey on the outside of it. And ultimately, I probably got to pay more attention to the pan so I don't get to this point. There was probably a sign that was telling me that my salmon was burning, but I was probably ignoring it. So here's the whole idea, and I do it to myself. All you have to do is ask two simple questions. Ask them as soon as you're done cooking as you want, before plate up. Or ask them when you're done eating, when you, when you push that plate away from you, you know, maybe rub your belly a little bit, you lean backward with a satisfied sigh. Ask yourself those two questions or take a photo of it. Eat to your heart's content and then look at the picture later. What did you do well? What will you do better next time? And once you regularly do something well, remember then it goes in your toolbox. The skill is yours, you own it forever. And the things you need to do better next time are only the things that you'll be doing well in the future when they wind up in your forever skills toolbox as well. And that's the path. That's the path to carefree cooking. It's when you actually learn every time you cook. 
And it's one of the greatest moments for me as a culinary educator, I'll tell you. When I used to ask my culinary students to describe how they made a certain dish, and once I told them they could not read from their notes, no paper in hand, that they even had to close their eyes when they described the dish, they always got down to the method they used. And that, that's when I know I've got them turned over to methods instead of recipes. They would close their eyes and they would say, I heated the pan first and then I put the olive oil and I waited for the striations and they can see themselves going through it. But the rule that we had, the other rule that we had is you always have to end your description with next time I will. Next time I will, it is such an important question. So th the two questions and this one statement together is going to change your cooking tomorrow. I know it because that's the way you learn. And that's what I want you to do. I want you to close your eyes, replay the whole cooking process in your head, visualize it, right? Then ask yourself two questions and finish with next time I will. And I guarantee you that next time will be a spot even further down the path to carefree cooking. So let's see what's going on inside our Carefree Cooks community for lifetime members of web cooking classes. It's the Carefree Cooks gallery and there are way too many of them. <laughs> the food in our Carefree Cooks community is abundant and it looks beautiful. You scroll through there, it's unbelievable. Uh, we start with Ronnie. Ronnie's making fresh pasta, first time. First time, I love to see first timers with the fresh pasta because making your own pasta is definitely an opportunity to ask yourself what you did well <laughs> and what you could do better because it takes a little bit of practice. But I think there's probably a lot more did well with this one. Uh, nice job, Ronnie, really good, especially for a firstie. Uh, let's see, Jackie, there she is. Jackie posted her first try at the basic saute method. She admits that she needs a little bit more practice, but. I think this is really good here. That's a good looking dish. So Jackie, identify where you need more practice. Not generally, I need more practice. What did you do well and what could you do better? Next time you will. Sherry uh, also posted her first attempt at a method, but this is the poaching method on a piece of salmon along with a uh, broccoli and on, along with broccoli and an onion risotto that's what it is but she ends her post exactly the way that I want everyone to end their meals with next time I will and the answer she said was <laughs> saute it <laughs> she she doesn't like poaching i don't think you know it's not the best plate appeal uh lastly alice decided to make her own caesar dressing she's been buying bottled dressing for a long time no more bottles for alice nice job alice so what did you do well and what are you going to do better next time it's just two simple questions because they're so important to focusing your journey developing the confidence that brings creativity, and then the creativity that brings pride in what you cook. And that is the point you want to get to. No matter what, for who, how many, pride in what you cook. So let me ask you this, when you throw away the outer and cook the inner, and then eat the outer and throw away the inner, what have you got? A corn on the cob. Think about it. Peel it down, throw away the husk, cook what's inside of that, then eat that, and then throw away the cob. Eh, it's a little silly. <laughs> Look, if you know someone who's stuck on the recipe treadmill, having to learn cooking again and again every night, every time they open a book, please like and share this video with them so they can start cooking with confidence, creativity, and pride instead of frustration. And, you know, I keep saying it's a journey, <laughs> the path to becoming a truly carefree cook. And any journey needs a guidebook and my free ebook, The Five Forks to Carefree Cooking, will help you make the right decision when you come to a split in the road. And you're going to find quite a few of them. So you stay on that path to prideful, carefree cooking. Go to fiveforksguide.com to download your copy today. 
So until next Tuesday, where we take even more steps toward breaking the carefree cook's code, this is Chef Todd Moore reminding you that there's a method to your cooking success. Bye everyone.